Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. Today we're going to be talking about Ubuntu's latest release. This is 24.10, better known as, or <laughs> what an intrepid name, Oracular Oreo. Uh, it seems like uh, the last the last thing I talked about was Ubuntu, and now we're talking about it again. So this release came out on October the 10th of 2024. It is an interim release, which means it'll be supported for about nine months. So sometime about the end of July 2025, you'll be wanting to upgrade that to probably 2504, which is also going to be an interim release, or you might elect to go to 2404, which is a long-term support release. One of the things that they announced, uh, Canonical announced uh, during this release is that all of their distributions from here forward will be receiving the latest in Linux kernels. And they feel that that allows them to support a wider range of new hardware, which yes, it would. And so that includes the LTS versions of their distributions as well. Uh, the 2404 will be receiving 611 support with the dot two update, which is not out yet. So there's a number of flavors that support Budgie, KDE, uh, LXDE. There's Mate, there's Ubuntu, there's Kylin, which is the uh, Chinese version of Ubuntu for their market. There's a Ubuntu Studio, which is designed for audio and video users. There's Zubuntu, which is based on XFCE. And then there's uh, an Ubuntu Unity and Ubuntu Cinnamon as well. Not to mention, there's also the one that we'll be looking at today, which is the flagship, which is uh, just the normal desktop or based on GNOME. So what do you need to run this thing? So first of all, you need one of two different architectures, either AMD or Intel, which is usually referred to as an x86-64 based platform or ARM. You may have a little bit of difficulty finding the ARM downloads. It took me a little bit to find it. They're not, you have to go through the mirrors to get to locate those. And it, yeah, it, it took a little bit to find them, but yeah, they're there. What do you need to run this thing? You need a, a dual core, two gigahertz or better CPU. You need four gig of RAM, and we'll talk about that. You need 25 gigabyte of uh, disk space and 1024 by 768 resolution or better. They've added, they've added that you need either a USB or a DVD to uh, be able to s support. Yeah, uh, I, I really, do you guys still use DVDs? I I don't think I have burned one in probably 10 years. Uh, and then they, if, uh, and then optionally you need internet access is highly recommended. What do you get? What's new in this thing? So uh, first of all, on the desktop flagship is GNOME 47. You may find some documentation out on the Ubuntu site that says GNOME 46, but that's wrong. It is 47. It does have support for NetPlan 1.1. That's uh, in both the desktop and the server. Firefox is version 131.0.2, so it's the latest at present. LibreOffice 24.8.2, and remember, LibreOffice now uses the year as part of the versioning. Redis has decided to pull up stakes and move to closed source or commercial. There is a free use for Redis as long as the amount of data you're storing is less than 30 megabyte. You can use it for free. However, it has gone to two different licenses. One that you can choose is a subscription license. Then there's a metered license, uh, which provides cloud-based pricing. Valky is now replacing uh, Redis. So Valky is a drop-in replacement for Redis. It offers full compatibility software-wise. ARM64 is, and I don't think Ubuntu is the only one that's doing this. They 
uh, they are moving to uh, a 64K uh, page size. So the advantage is it's obviously it's better throughput because it's larger sizes that you're managing in the page size. And it will take more memory for sure because you're, you have larger blocks that you're moving around. There is uh, also a new security center that's in uh, with this release. Right now, the only thing in it is a, an experimental feature called permissions prompting. And, but, but Canonical says they'll be adding more to that security center. Let's go take a look at the benchmarks. Just so you'll know, um, I have, uh, there's five different benchmarks here. The first one is Arch on the AMD 7700X. There's the M1, which is the Apple M1 that runs Fedora Workstation 40. Uh, there's also Ubuntu 2410. I installed this on the Intel Meteor Lake uh, laptop. And then I have an older benchmark for UBI 2404. And then uh, the one that's current, 2410. Now 2404 and 2410 are both done on uh, virtual machines. The, the winner here in this one is obviously AMD. And we'll take a look at the maybe byte per second tests. And in this case, uh, AMD again. Now, what's interesting is that the Meteor Lake actually uses a PCIe 4. And currently on the AMD, I do not have a PCIe 4 drive in there. So, yeah, this is a just a, a PCIe 3. And uh, right in the middle of the pack is uh, the 2410 on the, on the virtual machine. The bytes per second test, it's almost identical except for Ubuntu drops back to the uh, back of the test. These are summary tests of, uh, of the benchmarks. So uh, Arch is on top again, and then followed by Meteor Lake, Fedora, and then the virtual machine. So as far as the, all the test results, the, the, and again, these aren't sorted correctly, but the AMD is on top, followed by the Meteor Lake, followed by the M1 uh, on Fedora. And then, of course, the two bringing up the rear end is the virtual machine. A breakdown of uh, CPU tests. Uh, yeah, as, as you would expect, 7700X comes out on top, followed by the Meteor Lake. Common kernel benchmarks. Yeah, the Meteor Lake comes out on top with this, and then followed by the AMD. There are extra cores in that Meteor Lake, so there's 22 cores there. Memory tests. I'm going to say the AMD is going to be faster here, because the memory is faster than anything else any I have, so... Yeah, followed by, now the Meteor Lake and uh, Fedora's memory is almost identical. Their, their, their geometric mean of all the server tests, uh, the AMD is on top again. This is single-threaded. Interesting that the, that the uh, 12th gen runs ahead of the uh, M1 Fedora. And as far as the overall wins, yeah, uh, AMD's in the lead, followed by 2410 on the Meteor Lake. So this is not the overall speed. This is the number of times uh, that the AMD took first in one of the individual tests versus Ubuntu. So 34 versus 17. Last place, uh, 31 times Ubuntu 2410. Now it also, the M1 is running 611 as well. So, yep. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not running 612 here within the next week. So what are my final thoughts on this? Well, there's, I did run into some bugs. You're always going to run into bugs with these things that, um, especially today, it, it, it's, you know, the pace of development is very fast. There's things that normally Ubuntu would, would do like in the past when they get, when they get things like uh, uh, GNOME 47, they in the past they have waited to install it in the next release. So I think that's what they were kind of planning to do, but apparently they decided to just uh, bypass 46 and go directly to 47. So far as the stability of the release, it seems fine. It seems like it's working pretty good. Like I said, there's a few bugs, a few potholes, but the not, not craters. 
not bad. So with that, uh, that's all I had for today. And, uh, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. Always, always uh, uh, glad that you share your ideas and comments uh, with me and others. So with that, I hope to see you in the next video and bye for now.